Right. Um, I'll be referring to a few little notes here as well. So our first little clip, I'm going to show it here now, and I'm going to let the lads have a look at it for a couple of moments, and we'll see have we any reaction. So I'll ask you also, um, just watch the clip. It's about two minutes long. And just note down any coaching points that you will notice. Just tidy it up a little bit better here for you. Now again, apologies if the um, if the screens are jumping on any of you or if the video is slow. There's nothing really we can do about it and he struggled through it. So let's watch this one anyway. Mike Foley, Thomas and Teeth Canis, tries to throw Alan Dempsey, Fogger Dempsey in. Adrian Breen. And Shinnaneer is the game, Adrian Breen. Ah, Shin score! Eight of the game, Adrian Breen. For Teresha Kareesh, you can see Shin Kareesh, the high Kaha King. Peter Casey, Chas Treston. Peter Kassaga Hall in the chin, Kassaga Nain Strokes, and Jessica Ramir. But yes, not that. Kuya Hagesh to Trumper. Put on that, it's in a train, see him in the top. Now I just want to turn off my camera there, folks, for a second. Myself, and I might just um, I might just allow us to see a little bit more. Now this is where the fun starts. So, um, lads, I just hope that you have seen that now, and you can hear it in the background there. Um, I, I just I start there with Damien. Did you actually get to see that? I did, uh, Martin. It looks like footage there from the 2015 All Ireland Club final, Cushion to Allen, Napierce and Limerick. Um, I suppose just the few little pointers I put down was um, like the forward play and team play of Napierce was far superior. Um, I'd have a question mark over the defence of of Cushion Dahl. They weren't touch tight, and um, I just seemed to think Napierce had a lot of space. Um, and there'd be a question mark over the marking. So there are just a few little things I spotted in a coaching context there in the last minute or two. Okay, Damien. So what I'm going to ask you now, lads, the rest of you, just ask for one thing, if you saw any one thing that might have stuck out that if you were over either of those teams, you might bring to the field the next night. So, um, Cahill, just hitting you there to start, just as, as a football man, was there anything at all you might see there that, that you might think might merit a, a bit of work and training? Um, I suppose I, I would have felt that it was very positive play. I thought there was great pace in it, high fielding, um, and the ball winning in front was really good. I suppose Damien questioned the, the defending there, but I would have thought they were all out in front of their men, and I'd be working on that again the next night in training. Okay, thanks. Make sure thanks. Keep doing it. Thanks for that, Dara. Um, or Dara says, I, uh, thanks for that. So, high fielding and out in front and pace. Um, okay, Keith, up in cabin. I'm not sure how your connection is. Could you see it, Keith? I can see some parts of it. To me, the the uh, cushion, or out in front, the players out in front as well. From was what stood out to me that they seem to be making the space for themselves. Okay, okay, Keith. Right, um, folks, I could I could stay a night on this clip, and um, you know the clip is just over a minute. There's so much in it, and Damien there in particular. I uh, would have seen me working on this one before and I could literally spend a half an hour on it, but I'm going to move it on. Now, the question I have put to people with this is, OK, there are several coaching um, points in it, but I put them together for a particular reason. And amazingly, the football man is one of the few that actually came up with the reason I put them together. And the reason I put these ones together is to give a great example of the importance of being out in front for the ball. Um, you know, down the ranks, you know, down in your line B and your line C and down the ranks, being out in front is not maybe critical because some guys will miss a ball or even if they get the possession, they mightn't do any damage. But as the levels go up, if you if you give away a possession, it's game over. So 
the main reason I put those ones together was to show the importance of being out in front. But um, I suppose as a side attraction of those, what also came out in this one was the absolute top class striking ability, in particular of the piercing. So I'm just going to roll it on here now again, uh, and you just watch the importance of being out in front. Donald Trump, Martin, will uh, speak. Like there we have now, we'll say, if you can see it just down there, the Piercing man is out in front. Yeah, right. just don't and then, you know, it's that's, a that's game over, really. That's game over at that level. And we have out in front. Out in front again, and at that level, when the touch is good. So again, Getting back to the essentials, the first touch has to be vital. The striking then comes in, the striking, the ability of strikers. If you can't strike, well then having the possession is no real use. And ball in again, out in front. Okay. And the striking ability. Mike Foley, Connor to Teeth Canis, Trasta and throw Alan Dempsey, Fogger Dempsey here, Adrian Breen. Action here with Adrian Breen. Oh. I've said before, and Damien has said it, and Dara has said it, folks, you know, the key elements of coaching, the key elements of hurling, the key elements of training, striking. If you can strike, you're dangerous, you'll be picked on any team. If you can't strike, well then, you got to get back and work on it. So, I mean, these little clips are just showing that. Okay. So folks, again, with that one, as you see yourself, there were several other little items there that I didn't look at. So I'm going to throw up another little set to you here now. I'll just tidy him up again a little bit more for you. Now again, we'll have a little over a minute here. So folks, I'm going to ask you again, have a look and just give me one thing, maybe when I ask you, one thing that you will spot. And again, if you can read my mind and say, why did I put these together? Now, we'll be very, very clear. Nobody has the gospel on, on what you should see. And... Um, I, for one, would have three or four different lads looking at a game and I'd always be asking their opinion. And what I might miss, somebody else might pick up. But it's about, I suppose, seeing what is really, really, really important. OK, so I let this one roll and again, have a look at it yourselves. Jot down what you see, you know, and I, I again, I think by looking at other teams rather than your own, it's oftentimes better because when you look at your own team, Maybe you're going to embarrass guys, maybe you're going to insult them a little bit, unless it's maybe fouling and you need to show up their fouls. But if you're looking for good play, and I generally look for good play, you look at maybe some of the top teams and say, look what these guys are doing. So this is what we should be doing. So I let it roll here. With you, David Green, David Green, or Guru Green, or come on, David Green, or August David Green. For a bit, as a Tashi Tosik, Yellow Gakira, that come in this fire and appear she could be shot. Well, I'm Dara Colin again, and Dempsey, for I can all go heave the law of claims anymore, Mike Bannis. David Dempsey, Castle Chen, and Tasco Rago, with you, Shane Dowling. He's touched, that's Tosik Shane, Tasha Torfin score, Chen, I see Falk Letter, Jerry, Ronan Lynch, Tosk the Mach, Tosk the Mach, with you, Kirk Kennedy, Kennedy, as. David Dempsey, he lets score for you, David Foss. Ah, that's loads of Dempsey could do. Don't hold, he lets score for you, don't hold Foss, which is something about any character this. Okay, folks, um, Adrian, could you see those by any chance? Yes, uh, yes, Martin could uh, see uh, sporadically, but you could get a fair 
image of what was happening there. I suppose the main things we looked at there or saw, saw from that is the space afforded to the Napierce players, the blue team in it. And I suppose as the clip went on, the amount of confidence they got from knowing that they were had the space and the freedom they had to play in the park and going on the scoreline as well, the, the better they got and the more space and freedom they got, uh, the, the more they came, the, the more they stood out as being a good bit ahead of Cushendall. So that was the main things I picked out of that, uh, just the space that the Cushendall players were affording than the PRC players to express themselves. OK, Adrian, thanks for that. Um, Ryan, if you can, could see them, could you see them? I could, I could uh, see a, a, a bit of it, Martin, to be honest. Uh, my reception up here on the border wouldn't be the best, but I suppose okay. it was something, uh, what I did see was very similar to what Adrian mentioned there, just the space that the, the patient yeah. boys were getting. You know, uh, I suppose it's very hard for the likes of Cushing to all boys to mark boys like that who are just constantly moving and they all seem to be flowing okay. uh, perfectly well together, you know, so... Uh, yeah, that was probably probably something similar to Adrian, uh, what he thought of it, you know. Okay, Ryan. Um, at, at this stage, folks, just to say, and we, we'll see more of it as we go on through the night. It's amazing, you know, a team has to be exposed, we'll say, to, um, they have to be exposed to a higher level in order to learn it. And that's, that's true of even an individual player. If you have a player in your club that's maybe on your junior team and he or she are elevated to the senior team, it's going to take them a while to actually get used to the different pace. And that's the same at club level, it's the same at inter-county level. And, you know, um, how do you solve it? It's, it's not easy to solve it until you actually get up the ranks to play those games. Um, we would have seen with Schlock Neil there this year, you know, how their game has come on so much because over the last few years they're getting those games at a higher level and little by little they come up to it. Um, Declan... What I want to ask you, if you can see it, is there one thing there? Could you outthink me and say, why did I put those clips together, Declan, in your opinion? Just one reason. Martin, I have to inform you that my, my videos weren't playing that well, so I, I didn't get to see them as much as, they, as I'd like to. I'm going to get myself an Ethernet cable here now and see can it improve it. Okay, right. Well, listen, Dara, how, do, how could you view them? Could you? I could, Martin. Uh, the... What I spotted was also spotted by one of our um, audience there on the questions and answers put up, and it's exactly what I was going to say. Uh, Napierce always had a support runner and the use of the hand pass. Okay. Right, Dara. Dara, you didn't hear that coming from me before, did you? I didn't, but I'm, as I say, that's that came in from one of the audience now. It's up in yeah. the Q&A there as well. Yeah, well, lads, I'm going to move that on now because, you know, as I said, so he, he, there's so many clips there we could slow them all down but the main reason they put those together and again what the lads are saying is 100% true and if we ask 10 other people we get 10 other answers and they're all true because you can pick you can pick out so many things but the main reason I put those together was again to show one of those essential skills that we had at the beginning and that's the hand pass so I'm just going to wind you back over them again and just in particular to focus in on the hand passing because we're going to talk a little bit about it as well. With the ball there. And he gives a good hand pass. We could have stopped at this stage and we could say, right, apart from the hand pass, that one didn't come off, but look how this ended up, which brought in another skill. Young strike there, brought a goal to us. Okay, here we go again. Again, the hand pass. Again, sublime striking. And pass again, and again, somebody, lads, mentioned it, running at pace, running into space. A hand pass. And the Here we go again. David Denson and pass. Now watch again. Hand pass. Watch this hand pass in particular. 
Like that one went back, right? From there, back to there. A man totally unmarked, and he can see the whole field then. He can take his shot, or he can pass it in. You really have to watch this one. And again, folks, you know, if, if, if your video is not showing up well there, bear with it because um, the recording that we put up in the morning or tomorrow will show it all pretty clearly. OK, so just watch this for hand passing. Coach some of those things. To me, two ways. First way is you coach them separately. You coach the hand pass, but then on the other part of your training session, you play games and games and games and games. And if you're only playing a seven aside match or whatever numbers you have, or a nine or a ten aside every night, you will develop that skill. Now, hand passing is sometimes, and we've mentioned in some of the earlier webinars, sometimes it's a skill that's neglected. And it looks easy, but it's far from easy. If you think about it, and on one of the nurseries there, Damien had um, had guys hand passing up against the wall. He had them hand passing with balloons, maybe only a meter, two meters away. Now you bring that up to adult level to be able to hand pass the ball five meters and both players standing. That's not all is executed 100 percent. Now put that out to 10 meters, put it out to 20 meters and then put one player running, put two players running and then you see how difficult it is. But probably the biggest challenge in hand passing is what I would call it to be prepared to hand pass it. So many players will win a good ball and they're not prepared to pass it. They want to take that shot themselves. And nine times out of ten, when you win a possession, you're probably going to be marked up. Um, I just might ask Cahal there, you know, it's probably the very, very same in football. Cahal, when you grab a ball, I would say nine times out of ten, there's a player on you. Whereas if you have, I suppose, the vision or the preparedness to throw that ball off in a pass, that's where the scores can come. Would you have anything to say on that, Carl? Yeah, definitely. And I suppose the, the one thing out from the past in there was there was always a support um, player. I suppose the other thing to say is that the other team weren't defending, but there was, every single time in the clips there was a support runner either staying in the pocket or coming at pace to take the ball on like that last clip. Very good, Carl, And thanks for that because, again... Um, I know Damien and Dara and Declan would have heard me coming out with this before. There, in my opinion, there, there's five aspects to a hand pass. The first aspect is somebody has to have the ball, otherwise known as gain in possession. That's the first thing. The second thing is the person that has it has to be prepared to pass it because there's no point having it if you won't pass it. The third thing is you have to be able to pass it. You know, it might sound silly, but if you're not able to hand pass the ball, well, there's no point in trying. So that's the third thing. You have to be able to give it. Now, the fourth thing, and Cahill touched on it there, there has to be somebody there to give it to. And you could say the cushion doll has worth in marking. You can't mark a runner like that. It's impossible. If your players are running for the pass, you cannot mark them in any game. Once they're gone, they're gone. You can't drag them down. So if they're gone, you cannot mark them. So that's the fourth part of the hand pass to have somebody to give it to. There's no point in having the ball, being able and being prepared to give it if there's nobody to give it to. And the final piece of the jigsaw then in a hand pass is the person you're giving it to has to be able to receive it. That's actually known as catching or handling the ball. And we, again, that's one of the essential skills to be able to take a ball in your hand that's maybe given relatively easy to you. So again, folks, you know, we're looking at hand passing there in those clips, but what also came out in the middle and when it comes out, every single clip nearly you look at is striking, to be able to strike. And it brings us back there to the essentials. OK, so we'll, we'll roll on to the next little set now. And I'm just keeping an eye on the time because I'm inclined to, um, inclined to ramble when it comes to these things. Again, for these um, clips, folks, you know, I've, I've chosen club games. And I've chosen, we'd say in the last one, the Piercing and Cushel Dahl, two of the top teams in the country. In this one, it's Ballyhale, Shermock, Sprinkle Kenny, and Schlock Neil. And the reason I chose club teams is club players are ordinary players. You might, if you're lucky, have one or two or three county players, but the rest of them are ordinary players that could be from anywhere. 
And, you know, the skills are the skills. Whether you're a top class intercounty player or you're a junior B player, the skills are the same. So again, with this one now, again, I just want you, those of you that can, just watch and see what you see. Okay, so we'll let her roll there. Reached into Gumaiga. Joey Holden at Pamela Norse. Couple of Schlitter. Matres Machtestachenson. Go father. Agus. Interest up a hurl or fall. Reed in his cow. More green meets not hard. Edro Fenley. Well, as I said, Bolter Norse again. Owen Reed. Owen. Of all the sun. It's on over her father and son. Oh, Mark McGuigan. It's the son of all international. It's not just in stock. Yeah, on a score there, Fad. The uh, week Christy McCaig on on uh, on Puck's there on Shane off real on speed. Fight to Hernash Eger Reid, pass live with Dustin Son, Oak Shoe, the draw Mullen. Vishay Geary, pass a hort to Adrian Mullen on Shane, Forshe, Hulani, Kulhe, Schlachnail, McCaig, a horse on the staff, a draw Shane McGuigan, Shane McGuigan, a trumpet, sure. Oh, Valahail, a command to a year, a Dierigan Schlitter, a hard, a Dierig. Shell of a halt there. Shahuin Koraha, Lion, Les Shefflin, Pass Live, Oh Shefflin, Rohan. Take a Dassy Stigginson, the male of Voida, Egg of Shame, McGuigan. Interaction, sorry, get Christy McKay, Captain the Forney, Captain the Forney, Tour Face, Score, August Shin, Score, Bjorn, son of Captain the Forney, Christy McKay. Fuck <laughs> Okay, folks, um, two minutes of videos there, and I know certainly I could spend the whole night on them. So what I want to ask you, lads, just pick out one thing that you might have seen, if you saw anything, and that's if you didn't just pass it on to somebody else. Um, so just to be fair there to Cahill, the football man, Cahill, did you, did you see anything at all there that you might say was, you know, was worth noting, uh, either, either good or bad? Uh, I suppose th the main thing in it would be it was, there was a lot more pressure on the ball compared to the, the previous game. I suppose the only one real thing I took out was the from the, the first play with Bally Hale, there was great anticipation of the break um, and then it was put over the bar. But out from that, I didn't see a common team across the, the, the clip. Yeah. Okay, and I tell you, funny enough, I didn't put these together with a common team, but I, I found something that actually cropped up fairly often for me. But... Um, You've mentioned there, Cahill, what we might have regarded as one of the hidden skills of the game, and it is the getting the breaking ball. You know, it's easy to say the striking and the catching and the hooking and blocking. They're what we call the obvious skills. But getting in for a break, and we touched on it in a couple of the webinars, getting in for a break, that is a serious, serious skill. OK, so I run down to the lads very, very quickly there. Uh, just for one, one thing you might have seen, and whoever's at the end, maybe Everton will be gone. So, Adrian, did you see one thing there, please? Okay, Martin. Yeah, uh, just sporadic again. But uh, one thing I did notice was that um, maybe a, a, a team that was there was the, the array of striking. There was a lot of striking off the back foot. Uh, the point by Chrissy McCaig there, the midfielder for um, for for Schlock Neil and uh, the number twelve for Schlock Neil. It was a lovely, lovely, lovely strike under pressure. Uh, there was a lot of rooks in what I saw as well. So it's it's sort of defining that rooks are part of the game now and have to be practiced as well. Uh, but uh, that's that's the most thing that I pulled out of that. That's the only common theme yeah. I could see developing in it. Right, that was that was two things, Adrian. I'm just looking for one because the boys oh. will have nothing by the time I get down to them. <laughs> um, okay, we'll go we we'll go for striking off the back foot. Strike, the striking. Okay, well I'll take striking will do me nicely there. Striking again, lads, and I want you know, I just know the same things that come up and up and up. Ryan, if did you see anything there? Unfortunately not, Martin. I'm going to have to pass it on. Sorry. Okay, right. Well, I tell you what, Ryan. If you if you get into a situation there where um, you can see things, just put in there and let us know. Other than that, I'll I'll um, I hate to say it, Ryan, but I'm putting you on the bench. All right. <laughs> no problem. All right. Now listen, folks. Actually, that's good training as well. You know, everybody needs a bit of time on the bench. That's good training, especially good lads like Ryan, intercounty players there. 
Um, Declan, you went off to get something there. Did you get it, or did you? Are you on the bench as well? Well, I think the only thing that I saw Martin has improved slightly, but of no great brilliance to say at least was the quick free okay. there from yeah. Ballyhale Shamrocks in in defence, and ended up being a score. Worked it up the field very quick. Every yeah. every one of the Ballyhale boys seemed ready for the free quick free. Yeah, that's that's top class, Declan. Again, alertness and ready for a free. Um, Keith, up in Cavan there, any sign of anything? Again, Martin, I could be going for the bench, but from what I did see was, Mark, to Damien alluded to earlier, was the, the amount of rocking from, from the freeze frames that I did see. Okay. Um, Dara, over in Sligo, any one thing? Uh, I, w I wouldn't say it was something I saw a lot of, but the one thing that stood out to me was the ground strike and just having the ability to okay. react quickly like that. Right, a goal, a goal from a ground strike, and we saw a goal from a ground strike uh, from the Piercing in, in the earlier clip. So again, we've been preaching that gospel on all the on all the little webinars, the importance of having all the skills. And there we have two of the top teams in Ireland. We've shown the Shami Cannon mm -hmm. one already, and um, the ability to be able to strike a ball off the ground. Now, as I've said before, how long did it take to score those goals? You could say a split second, but you have heard me saying it took about 10 years of practice and ground hurling. Uh, Damien, did you pick out any one thing there? Well, I did, Martin, yeah. Look, to be fair, again, the technical skill of ground hurling. Um, Dara said it there, and I'm not going to change my mind. Um, I think we're, we're it's it's very undercoached uh, ground hurling now. Anywhere I am, I never see a coach engaging with ground hurling left and right. Um, if you remember, John tried the Offaly hurler over time at centre forward, and he just little flicks here and there in the ground, opening up the fences. And I don't, I think it's a skill that is neglected. And um, defences kind of, it's very hard to defend against it if you get a quick ground ball into a forward line from anywhere, half back line, midfield, even your own half forward line moving it onto the inside line. So I, I'd hone in on the on the ground striking there, Martin. Okay, thanks for that, Damien. And again, folks at home, you know, I, I'm hoping if you're getting the opportunity yourself to be jotting down the little bits and pieces. And already, you know, already we're seeing there are so many things to see. So, you know, on a two minute video clip, you know, there are so many coaching points. But what I'm trying to get across to you is either watching the games even without videos or taking little clips that you're, you know, you're remembering certain things that need to be worked on. Good examples, poor examples. Now I'm going to replay this again, folks, and I'm going to stop it several times. Um, and just, okay, I've, I've had a lot more time to look at these than you have, so I'm just going to show you what I've seen in them. Are you know? Uh, well, we get to the start again. Okay. Um, right, first one, and I'll tell you in advance what I'm looking for. The first one is, there's there's a foul. There's a foul on it's Joy Hall and from Ballyhale Shamrocks. And there's about three guys around him. Absolutely no need to foul him. Watch. He still took him the whistle blows. So we mentioned it as one of the as one of the uh, not the seven essential skills, but we we put it in as an add-in, which is unnecessary fouling. Unnecessary fouling loses so many games. So first of all, there anyway, as I said, um, a foul that was not necessary. Okay. Joey Holden let Hamelinos couple of schlitter. That's a quick pass that one of the lads mentioned. There's the quick free. And what happens from that? It's on Goffada. Hurries it up. Long ball, folks. A long ball. Again, we've been saying, especially outside of the top inter county teams, the short play is dangerous. Now it's up to yourself. I'm not saying it's right, I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm just giving you my own opinion that if you know if you're down at under 14s, under 16s, even in the strong counties, every time you pass short, you're drawing the opposition onto you. And people think that the top teams don't play it long. Well, there's an example of the All Ireland champions playing a long ball. Now, I can assure you, when the ball goes in around there as a defender, that's that's where you don't want it. Cahill mentioned the breaks. Look at the two greens standing off waiting for the breaks. And let's see what happens. Right break into the hand. Again, you need to touch. And it's going to obviously finish with a strike. 
Well, as I said, both to know to get Owen Reid. Find that little bit of a clip itself. There's so much. Now, the next one. No goal, the sun. Well, watch this again. This is a foul by Valley Hale on, on the Schlock Deal, lad. So, again, player on the ball. I think three will come in around him. So, that player is going nowhere. He's going nowhere at the moment. He's certainly not a danger to anybody. And over there, five and son. Over. Pull around the neck and the foul. And that's, that's not a foul. I call it, that's a point. Okay. Now, the ref had a hand up. He allowed the player to go on. But if he didn't, it was a free and it was a point. And again, here we have Brendan Rodgers, uh, a sublime score from, from play. How many times did Brendan Rodgers have to poke a ball in training in order to put that ball over the bar? And this is what we keep getting back to and back to. You can talk about all the tactics you like and all the plans and all the game plans, you know, but if you cannot have your players that they cannot strike, well, everything else is a waste of time, really. Yeah, score and again, five. you saw a hand pass there. You know, so all the skills, lads, are coming together and, as I said, ordinary club players. The uh, week, Christy McCaig on, on, uh, on pucks there on Shane off Reel on Reed. Now, our next one. Fight to Harnash, Egger Reed, pass live with Daston Son, the shoe, the drum mullet. Surprise, Cahill didn't say that one. Did you see it that time, Cahill? You there, Cahill? Sorry, it froze there. Yeah, did you see that one? <laughs> Okay, you all saw that one, boys. So, again, an unnecessary foul. So, in these clips, what's coming out for me there are, that's um, that's three unnecessary fouls already. Right, so we'll drive it on here again. Have the hand pass again, out of trouble. Cool. This one, uh, he wasn't blown for it. But, again, you know, it is a foul. There's no doubt about it. And as a defender there, Joy fouling, that's 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 going to be a point. As you mentioned, boys, the rocks are a torment. They're, they're a scaldation on hurling. My advice, especially to forwards, would be stop rocking. Kick the ball out. Kick it out into space. It's not the end of the world if a forward doesn't get it. Okay, maybe the backs need to um, kill it a little bit more. But by and large, what's happening in rocks is you're knocking the ball off of your own player. And I think the sooner the better coach you stop sending in three and four and five lads into rooks because it really becomes a lottery. And they can talk all the like about winning the hard ball, but, you know, a, a sensible a sensible player will kick that ball out very, very quickly. Again, the use of the hand pass and the use of a bit of space. Oh, what have we here this time? Again, those little what people call the basics, the basics of a hand pass, the basics of a strike. You know, and I would be seriously into games based approach to training. However, you don't learn those skills in the game. You have to learn them separately. You have to learn the hand pass separately, the striking separately, and then you bring them into the game for practice. So again, to go back over what we've been saying in recent weeks, half your session on skill development, get the skill right first, then get it fast, then get it fast under pressure, and then the second half of your training, you're implementing it in your games. But, you know, but players and coaches should be able to identify who can pass the ball, who can strike a ball, where are they weak? What do they need to work on? And that's the whole purpose of tonight, to try and draw that out of you. Now again, this one is a long ball in. That's what happens. A long ball in, in around the house. That's where defenders don't want it. Quick ball, you can't defend it. Again, I'm pushing. Long ball, quick long ball. Doesn't give backs, don't have time to get it too organised. And a ground strike then, and away we go. Now, the last one again is another little foul. A foul on a player that, 
you know, wasn't wasn't really a danger at that point in time. Here's yeah, the ball again. Slash the ease of the shot for Brian, Brian Cassidy on Shin. Rich on Lee Road. It's just pouring Shay on Lee Road, TJ. Can uh, score all on a puck in the Now, here we have it. There's an arm comes around and there's a little flick on the hurl. It's Kumid and Kalish. That's sorry. a point. That's a point. Right now, that's a point. But at, at that point in time, that player with the yellow helmet there, it's on Reed, TJ's brother. He didn't have a score there. But the fact that the player fouls him, then it's a throw up the grass job, whistle, stand back 15 metres, and over she goes. Okay, right, um, that's number set three. We're not doing too bad. Okay, here we go again with the next batch. To void and send us to Shamroga. Right, folks, so the same again here now, just again, have a look and see what you see. on on so large she has stopped a quick Colin Finley I guess better is she on tactic at all slap me Brian Cassidy on my team for Laura Hart Brian Cassidy left point I guess on the rag rare fad oh slap me yeah on the top of the rare fad score into go Brian Cassidy smart team to stop she I guess dear a car on trust non so toss let me to reach count half with Toka egg oh she no doherty count the hands on the get Brendan Rodgers didn't take a mahi get Rodgers shock when Rodgers are really Byron Spas on side, Ronan Corcoran. Harnash to draw captain, Michael Fenley. Fenley in his staff's a coup. Come on, get Colin Fenley and saw Harnash to draw Evan Shefflin. That's all in. No, Evan Shefflin to draw Connor Walsh and so. Walsh in his. Can't say Paul in your fault. Coe Martin, Shade, Scott and Son in her own read. So I get Walsh. Walsh in his Shefflin and King Keane. Coimer to all in and so Hussa and the Shamrog August Point to all in O'Brien Cody on Tarn account of Ryan Eric Corkin O Kairi Gamalo Selina Lon Huil Dustin the Shamrog August Nina the Foil Moore on Tura Ernie Lero de Fadison No Neil Tashi Comfort of Galore August Tiggin Sheet Go Will Fast No TJ I'm Shay Egg Shane McGuigan Gun Dow the command son of the male in the car no again Cormac McKenna Hogan Council. The yellow count half a token get shoot the drone Sean O'Casta Nish O'Casta de la Cow more grey or dog is this and Daphne Femar via Gwyn Sikhedla. Well, Connick and Dyer and and Ted Lahog has better than Yarnishy. Couplet Arad, less than him Rory, no less than Mion. I guess the Horace and better than she they do not see us. Um, and Dyer, well, and Dyer and they do not see us die fan. TJ Deer Kill top of Hogan just for a shin mar skill. Oh for it. August Vorse Stach so cool in it. August a Deer Gone Cody of him shoot. August Throch Bass and Son, me Hishkind, the Machsamach. August a Fechen Kinkin and Son score all it. No Mullen Fosse and New York and one of this shock win Brian Cody. Cody. Brewer shoot of his finish. Brewer for McKenna. Had the Horloy and so. Going on ton of the Connor McAllister. Dear Gail Hardock. Cody Arish. Cody Lesson pass live it. Cody Machen so. John Mullen Mullen. Go Fenley Fenley. Had the Negan in the air. The Hogan Fenley and pass. Okay, folks. Um, another little three minute clip that you could watch forever. Um, at this point in time, I'd just like to say. Bear in mind that that game was, for all intents and purposes, a one-point game. Um, Colin Finley got a goal, 
well into injury time to 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 um to give him a win by four points. But um from an onlooker's point of view, it was to me it, there was a point in the game which means either team could have won it. Now, if you look at the teams involved, the Ballyhale Shamrocks going in there as All Ireland champions, and after winning maybe I don't know, I can't count them at this stage, at least another six All Irelands. And you look at Schlock Neil, and if you go back about four or five years ago, they could hardly win a game of Oven Derry. And look at the difference. Look where they can come. And the point I'm making is you don't know what's around the corner with your team. If you know, if you put in the work and if you address the important elements of the game, you just don't know what's around the corner. So, you know, the skill ability there, the level of hurling there was just tremendous. And bear in mind also that game was played in January or February. So um, again, I, I'll ask you folks, any of you that could see it, one point, was there any one thing you'd pick out there that you'd, you'd take to the, I suppose, to the training field? So again, Cahill, being, being generous to you, that you're, you're in danger of becoming a hurling coach now if you're not careful. Cahill, did you spot any one thing there that's worth looking at? Um, I suppose the, the common team there was the, the long range striking and, and the shooting. Some of the scores were, were brilliant. And in particular, uh, Rogers down along the right, right hand side got a, a, a great score on, on the run. Yeah. So it doesn't matter where you're from. You're looking at Schlock Neil in Derry, you're looking at Valley Hale in Kilkenny. It doesn't matter where you're from. If you work on your skill, you can be absolutely top class. So striking again, coming through. Adrian, one for you there, if you could pick one, if you saw one other element. Yeah, on top of the striking on the run and Rogers' great score, I suppose at the at the early part of the, the clip, there was a nice bit of catching. So the primary position, and usually when they caught the ball, they were they're either released it fast or were fouled, which turned into a score. So, and uh, even though it froze for me, I could see that there was a lot of uh, rucking again and freeze conceded within them rucks. And uh, like you said earlier, automatic points if they did, if they did, if, if they were conceded in a scorable area. So I suppose the, the, the rucks and the fouling at the, at the end of it and the catching at the start. Thanks, Adrian. And again, folks, on the, on the pointless fouling, you'd be better off actually handing the ball to your opponent and take your chances with a hook or a block than fouling them. If you foul them, you stand back 15 metres and he gets a free puck. And I'm very serious. You'd be better off saying to him, excuse me there, friend, pick up the ball, hand it to him and say, now take your chance and, and see can you block him. Um, Ryan, Declan or Keith, if any of you saw anything there, speak up. If you didn't, um, I hope yeah. you're not too cold on the bench. No, uh, I suppose I, I was lucky enough I got to see a bit of it there. Um, the one thing I thought, uh, I suppose, was the sideline from TJ, you know, the, that's something that maybe coaches are seem to be working on there this last while, you know, that cross, the, hitting the ball across the field with the sideline on the man the run there. I know it takes a serious amount of skill on that there to do to do it, but there's obviously, that's something that them boys are working on in training. Do you know, it, 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 yep. didn't, yeah. it didn't just happen that day, you know, so I think we've seen TJ doing that a lot, uh, right few times now, this last few years, so that's maybe something that teams are going to be working on over the next while, you know, how they can create space for their forwards and their set pieces, you know. So Ryan, right, for that, so there was there was two things there. There was the ability to hit the ball off the ground, and mm -hmm. then there was the ability to actually open the eyes and look and see where would be a good place to put it. So two coaching tips there. Um, Ryan, while you're, while you're were able to see it, I'll give you another shot there. Did you see anything else in particular? I suppose I've seen a, like... There was a great clip of Rogers, as the boys mentioned, going down the lane. So, uh, you know, knowing when to take the man on. And then in the previous clip, he knew just to, to you know, strike it over the bar instead of going on. But, you know, so he knew when to go, take the man on. I suppose TJ done the same at the start of the clip. Got the ball and, and knew to go at them. And I suppose the likes of him and Colin were very direct that day, on the day as well. You know, and couldn't be stopped. So... I suppose it's just a coaching point that player players should know when to take the man on and when not when to maybe take the shot, you know. And if I ask you, if I ask you, Ryan, how do you learn that, Ryan? How do you learn when, <laughs> when, not, when not to? I suppose maybe through a bit of a, just experience and that there, you know. But then sometimes, you know, a player can't a player can't see everything when he's on the pitch, so it helps to have a man uh, beside him or the man around him. You know, let them know here. Take your shot. Take your shot. Or look, I'm at the back. All right, you have to take him on, beat him, or, or that. You know. So, 
Yeah. I suppose you need your teammates to help you and, and, and sort of give you a bit of direction too. Very good. And would it be, would it be fair to say, Ryan, you learn it by playing a game and training, not by drills? Well, that's it, yeah. Learning it and then, I suppose, doing what we're doing here, going going over it, uh, going over games or videos of trainings and showing boys, look at you, you get an opportunity to go past them there, you know, or saying, do you, should you have took that man on you two or three men to be it? You know, when when uh, the boy's sitting out behind you in the pocket, maybe for the wee pass, like we've seen with your boy from the patient. So we things like that might speed up the learning for, for players as well. All right, all right. I've seen that guys, so clearly is in things like the Kilmacud Sevens, where seven aside match, nine aside match, you know, you get so many opportunities. There's one player in front of you, you have the ball, and you learn, you learn that kind of stuff in small sided games. Um, mm -hmm. Keith, or, Keith or, or Declan, did you guys see anything there, any of you? No? Yeah, Mark, when we picked that one up a bit better than the rest of them, what stood out to me was the pace that they were taking their striking and taking their scores at. Okay. There was nobody standing by. Every score was taken at, at pace. Yep. Okay, Keith, thanks for that. And again, it's going back to what we've been recommending. And again, these are only recommendations. There's no such thing as um, anybody has the book on these things. But, you know, the recommendation we've been making was get the skill right, even slowly, then get it fast. And then get it fast under pressure. And that's what you're aiming for. And, you know, you will find and see, lads, We'll say Cush and Dahl there and Schlock Neil, as I said, um, clubs from up the country there where there aren't a huge amount of clubs. To get the opportunity to play more matches at higher levels, they very, very quickly then find out, yeah, I can actually do it faster. But you can't do it faster until you're put under pressure enough to make you do it faster. And this is where, you know, the more games you play and if you can have in-house training and it's up to players, Listen to the girls in Schlock Neil there a couple of weeks ago. The fact that they were able to have 15 on 15 in the field almost every night between themselves, they raised the standard. And that's the key to it. Um, Dara, if you saw one other thing there, maybe they've gone through them all. Uh, they, have, they have, in fairness, Martin. But one thing that if I was showing that clip to young fellas now, I'd be asking them to, to pinpoint which was the stronger side or weaker side for any of them hurlers. Because at that level, it's impossible to tell. And it just goes to, to show that they have to be interchangeable left or right. The first two clips, I think that one of the hurlers dummied right and struck left. And that, that's one thing I'd point out from it. Very good, Dara. And Damien, I'll give you the, any, anything left there for the Galway. Yeah, and Martin, what strikes me, you know, it's very evident. There's no room out there. And um, that says there's two teams totally selfless for the team with work rate and high intensity and you know that goes back to what Ryan is after saying there and Keith as well you know tactical the decision making ability of the player has to come to a high level um, when, when, when it's when it's when, it, when it's packed defences and, and midfield or the, the, the middle third is packed like that so when you when you have possession you've got to make a good decision and we saw a lot of that good decision making ability of the player there um, when they were under pressure. But really what struck out for me there, Martin, was that there's no room out there. Yep. OK. And why is there no room? Because players are closing down each other really fast. So, guys, I'm going to run back over those here again now, and I'm just going to, to give you the notes the that I have just... Martin, with just, here. Before, just before Sorry. you run, run back over that, there was one thing that that came up to me there that uh, you mentioned at the start of this about the essentials. One of the Schlock Neil boys missed a simple jab lift, which ended up being the line ball that TJ took, which ended up being a score because he didn't get it up. It wasn't executed 100%. Good stuff, Declan. I can't beat the bar boys for the sharpness. Lads, did you hear that? Declan, throw that out again, please. I was saying that one of the Schlock Neil boys missed the basic jab lift, which went out over the line and in turn went on then to uh, TJ Reid to take a sideline ball, which ended up in the score because he missed the basic, one of the basic skills. Yeah. Yeah. And we have discussed that kind of stuff up and down the country several times. Um, folks, any of you that have been on some of our workshops in the All-Ireland semi-final there a couple of years ago, um, Drawn match with Clare and Galway in the first game. One of the Clare defenders 
missed the jab lift out in front of the goals and a Galway lad ran in behind him, picked it up, put it over the bar. Draw match, Galway won the replay. So what Declan has pointed out there, folks, many, many people don't take it on board. That simple. No, it's not simple. That exercise of being able to jab lift, roll lift at speed is so, so important. Thanks for that one, Declan. Right, folks, I'm going to run down through this again. First few moments of it, I'm looking here at a note about two long balls, winning a break and a goal. And I also have written down here, rise, which is the lift. So let's see, can I find what I wrote down about? Sam Rogan. Long ball for a start. Long ball is all as a good ball. One three yards, all read. Break. In Derek Fenley, a rhyme shoe. Now I want to watch where this ball goes and watch who collects it, which is a catch, and watch what he does with it. Because he has a fistful of All-Ireland medals. And if he's prepared to do it, I think the rest of us should maybe consider doing it as well. That was a catch by Michael Fenley. Now, it was unopposed in that the player wasn't on top of him. And how do you learn that? You learn that by pucking the ball up and down the field as far as you can puck it. I would say 80% of catches are unopposed. And when I say unopposed, I don't mean that the Schlock Neil player wasn't on him, but he wasn't standing under him. Like he could put his hand up and the Schlock Neil man couldn't reach him. And most catches are like that. However, the opposite of catching is dropping. Okay, so let's roll it on there now and see what he does with it. You can talk all you like about finding men and looking for men. If Michael Fenley had to take time to try and find a man there, he wouldn't have got that shot away. He'd have been blocked down. Now it's in around the house. Now, watch it coming, and this is what Declan picked up on. Look, there's the pick. TJ, straight into the hand. If he missed that pick, no score. Look at the goal, and we can talk about the goal and a great goal. But if TJ missed that jab lift on that winter's day on a slippy, greasy pitch, well, then that goal would never have come. So, okay, we'll drive it on. On, on so long, she's in a stop a quick Colin Finley. I guess better is she on tactic at all? Slap nail and what looks simple, but it wasn't simple. Sublime touch making the run. Damien said there was no space. That Slap nail player found a little bit of space by moving in time, and his touch was sublime, and his shot was sublime. Lovely, beautiful score over the bar. Oh, here she comes again. Very good. Okay, what are we next? Right, here we have it again. That's the question. How many balls did Brendan Rodgers have to put over the bar from out in the sideline unopposed in order to be able to do that in an All-Ireland semi-final with two or three guys chasing them? That's the level. And so you're coaching youngsters. That's what they've got to work on. If they cannot do it, Unopposed, well then, what chance have they of doing it up there in a big match and severe pressure on them? Score, Drake Dual, score out of oh, Brendan Rogers. Well, door two got to it on Shane in our era. Lewis lost to Brendan Rogers on Shane. I guess Kyle Shane, Cousin Tory, Valle Hale, I guess near Rev. Now, let's see what we have here. So, after that score, which was a beautiful score, um, I think there's a little bit of complacency. Short puck out. Shouldn't have been allowed. Short puck out, and what happens next? Again, man getting space, Damien. How did that happen? Hand pass. Long ball again. There was no score out of that last one, but the long ball, quick ball in, the chances are there. Okay. I'm after losing my notes here now, I don't know where I am, but anyway, we'll let it run. I get Colin Fenley and so Harnash to draw Pass. Evan Shefflin. Pass all in. No Evan Shefflin, they draw Connor Walsh and so. Walsh and this. So what are we there? We had a bit of possession, we had a couple of passes. We had a Shamrocks player miss the first touch. 
Now he got away with it, he got that little bit of time to pick it again, but that could be very costly. Now in this case, we're looking at Owen Reid. He has the ball. You know, what's he going to do? Is he going to have the shot? Is he going to take on his man? What's the defender here going to do? What's the forward going to do? So let's just watch what happens. So that's what happened. Owen passes it back out. The defender didn't follow his man. Maybe he should, maybe he shouldn't. You know, who knows? But again, the preparedness by Owen Reid to pass the ball back out the field. And let's see what happens next. So where she went. And again, she wouldn't go over if the skill level wasn't there to do so. Now I'm looking for my notes here again. Um, yeah, okay. Watch, watch, hey, watch this one very carefully now. And we, again, we're going back to what Cahal mentioned earlier, being ready for the breaks. Key. I'm going to stop it here. Of one, two, three, four, if not five Ballyhale men outside waiting for a possible ball. Now, watch that guy there, where he goes. Ran out behind him very, very simply. Ran out behind him, and the pass was given without thinking. How many other players would try and take that ball in themselves? So, you know, again, it's about using the space. It's about moving. It's about being available for that hand pass. And then, if the ability is there to shoot, there's no, you know, there's no magic at all there, folks. It's it's actually a simple enough kind of hurling if you keep it simple. It's just everybody thinking. Again, in this case, with three Bally Hale men around one Schlock Neil man, and watch what happens. Did foul him. Now he didn't get the free, but they fouled him. But not enough with one foul, watch. To be sure, there's the foul. Now again, I changed the word from foul and I call it a point. So, had Bally Hale lost that match or drawn it, you could say their swear it was lost. And it comes down to that. No, Neil thought he'd come forward at the lower August. Tig and she'd go ill fast. So, TJ, I'm Schlock Neil, man, going nowhere. Three around him. Shane McGuigan. And the whistle go. So, again, folks, you know, they might not be the best examples in the world, but these are things you probably need to look out for with your own team. Are we giving the opposition six or seven points from pointless frees? You know, sometimes a free, I suppose it's, it's nobody's fault. Two, two players or three players contesting hard for the ball and somebody is a little bit awkward that, you, you, you know, you couldn't control. But when you have three players around one player, you can control that. Absolutely no need to give away that free. Um, now, again, watch this one. Watch what happens with the free. And again, I think Declan alluded to it earlier. Now, look at that for space. So you could say earlier on, the Shamrocks were alert to the short one, but Schlock Neil are equal to them. You know, it doesn't matter where you're from. They're the same skills, they're the same mentality you need to bring to it. Again, a point. Look at that for a shot from well beyond midfield. Now bear that in mind, a wet day, a wet day in January or February, and he'd be on midfield and he took the shot and straight over the bar. Now, Declan, I think this could be one that you mentioned and I had it written down here as well. Watch this one carefully, folks. Watch, watch the player failing with a jab lift and watch what part of the hurl is going under the ball. It's not the toe. Look at it, Look at it there. Look at it, the heel of the hurl, look, the heel of the hurl, and eventually misses it. So that's gone right back to raising the ball with the toe of your hurl, not the heel of your hurl. And again, that could cost you a match. Now, the lads have mentioned it already, the cut from TJ. There are a couple of things in this one. Looking around, seeing what's on. Now, you need every player observant at this stage. 
TJ's head is up. You need every player observant. But watch what happens. First of all, he executes a cut, which drops to a man here. But then you have a wing back running up the field and nobody marking him. And he eventually gets the score. Man, Damien, you might need to look at that again. Take off the glasses. You said there was no space, Damien. I'll come back to you on it in a moment. There's space. There's space. There's a wing back number five, Evan Shefflin, came up the field. So, you know. Now, again, watch this one, folks. And again, I'm tired of preaching it. Even at the top level, even at the top level, I would say 99 times out of 100, get the ball in defence, drive it up the field. Okay. This player, again, trying to do, um, you know, maybe trying to be, I don't want to use the word clever, not clever, trying to do something really, really good. But look what happens. It's a great example. And you're looking at top players here, folks. Now, you bring that down to under 14. And the player is being preached on to work through the lines and work it out. You know, this, this is happening at top level. So to me, the worst thing that'll ever happen a long ball from a defender is to come back up to you again. That's the worst thing that'll happen. Okay, but here it's a point. Again, it's a point. You're watching, you talk about space. There's plenty of space there. But again, it's winter, lads. It's a slippy pitch. I want you to watch real carefully this time. I want you to watch Owen Reid there. And Owen Reid is probably 38 years of age there. Just watch him. You can watch everybody else if you wish. Right, that little pause and turn back in, which I wouldn't be recommending. Turned in. Now there's, there's 13 again. There's Owen Reid. Looked away. Looked away. Now he has it. And again, look, as soon as he has it, the hand passes away. As soon as he has it. No messing, give it out. Now, watch him. Look at him there. And the player comes back in this way. Owen Reid has gone out of the picture. He's gone out of it, folks. Player continues here. And this is how lads think. Now, watch, I think that could be Colin Fenley here. You know, where is he thinking of going? So... The message you're trying to get across there is everybody has to think every second of the game. Pass live. Oh, there's two, three, you could say there's almost five Schlock Neil players around that one player. Now that's all is dangerous. And you have more than one on one. Now sometimes you have to do it. It's dangerous. Loose man out here. If this guy is prepared to give the pass. If he's not prepared to give it, well then no point. And he does give it. And he was hooked. Now look at Owen Reid, where he's after coming. Look, he was off out of the picture a moment ago. Look at him now. Look at him ghosting in like a pink panther. Look at him. Hurl up. Hurl up. And if he was seen, if the pressure was on, lads, that could have been a goal. Finley, Finley. Nobody sees him in there. Nobody sees him. Okay, it's a point. Right, Damien, I just... Um, not being smart was around, but you thought looking at it first, there was no space. Would you far be it for me now to ask a Galway man, would he like to change his mind? <laughs> no, the earlier clips, no, Martin. Where first half clips, there seemed to be more energy in everyone. For sure, there, the second half, um, it's opening up a lot. And um, there's a lot more running off the ball and support play there as well, which, you know, makes it easier for a lad in possession there to, to, to work with. But no, look at um, what I'm seeing there is, again, team play, support play. I wouldn't go away from, you know, the technical, the high skill levels, um, the tactical, the decision making ability. Um, and then when you have all that, you have to be able to be a team player again. And as you said there a few times, selfless, you have to be able to give the ball to the player in the right position and, 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 and you know, not go into ego and take it on yourself. Very good, Damien. And, uh, you know, again, folks, while space can be very, very limited, a quick hand pass or two and suddenly it can open up. And that's why we were, again, we were recommending in previous webinars, 
you know, possession games unopposed, first of all. Unopposed in a big area, unopposed in a small area, where players just get used to firing that ball around, moving, moving, moving. Unopposed, then opposed. Small area, big area. And you bring that into maybe five or ten minutes part of your training session, maybe once a month or once a fortnight. And then in the game, when the when the game is confined, you'll find the full back gets it, he's under pressure, a quick pop out to the corner back, maybe a quick one out to the wing back, and suddenly there'll be a little bit of space there that you think wasn't there before. Now, we're moving on there, um, Jenny, time is, we're not too bad. We're moving on here now to a couple of inter-county clips. And again, inter-county players, folks, they're club players as well. And there were club players before they were inter-county, but... In my own opinion, especially, well, I won't even say especially for youngsters. It's all as good to let players see what the top players are doing. And again, we learn from good things they do. And we learn from things that um, maybe don't work out so well. So I'll just roll this one up here now and get it ready. Back inside. Now, we'll let this one roll for whatever it is, two and a half minutes, and let's see what you see, if anything. Paul Murphy, under pressure from two Dublin men, but manages to get away initially. Gets that pass away then to Michael Fenley. Huge man in that midfield sector. Again, the early ball. The tactic is obviously to hit Owen Larkin and hit him off and brace the Colin Fenley. Gets it off into Owen Larkin. Goal scoring chance for Kilkenny. Owen Larkin inside. Goal by Owen Larkin. Super finish by Owen Larkin. They trailed by six points to two as Herity. Again, a huge fuck out. He's been brought into this Kilkenny team for that fuck out. Great catch by King Henry at 12. Lovely low ball in again to Owen Larkin who looks at fire at the edge of the square. It's the half pass back to Sheffield again. Richie Power is on his shoulder. It's uh, poetry in motion so far from the Kilkenny forwards as Richie Power. It's occurring all the time. Every puck out the double hit is, is coming back to him as quick as they hit it. TJ Reid, lovely ball this time into the corner to Richie Hogan. Hogan has nearly all the time in the world to decide where he's going to put this ball. Goes all the way across to the other wing forward. That's Michael Rice. His shot is half left though by Shane Durkin. That will allow Peter Kelly to go back and uh, get the situation under control. Oshin got the corner of Clears it long, up to that forward division. Paul Murphy breaks it down, but it goes as far as Paul O'Keeney. Keeney has a quick look at the beautifully caught this time by Joey Boland. Good to see him back in the Dublin jersey. Picked up by the man wearing the six on the opposite side. That's the captain of Kenny, Brian Hogan again. It's the early ball in towards the full forward line. Peter Kelly though was alert to this one. Swivels and gets it up. Didn't really look where he was putting it. And that allows Michael Finley to get onto the ball. Michael Finley has a shot in the end that's quite poor, you have to say. And a little bit of ping pong almost there, Nicky, where he, all the players just weren't quite careful enough when they were putting the ball. Yeah, a couple of, a couple of minutes of very poor play. Joey Boland, a good catch and a poor clearance. Brian Hogan, something similar. And Michael Finley there, that was a hopeless wide when Owen Larkin had actually made a good run in front of his man against the ball. But tidy man from Dainsford clears his lines. Down in top again of McCaffrey. Richie Hogan comes looking, but the man that gets the ball is Richie Power. Lovely little pass up to Henry Sheffield again. He's looking to his right and he sees Michael Rice. Suddenly, in acres of space in Crow Park, and Michael Rice takes all the time he can. Continue to get the uh, attention, and I suppose there's no doubt that the physicality has been up. Michael Kenny in this Leicester final this afternoon. James Chat gets the hand pass off. Henry Sheffield. Lovely little death pass out to Owen Larkin. Owen Larkin getting away from John McCaffrey. Has time to look at the post, get out to his right hand side, and Owen Larkin guides it. Okay, folks, um, that little set of clips now, um, Mike Harker might be watching in and might say, Jenny, why, why did I throw those up? You're being very, very hard in Dublin. But the reason I threw those up is that, okay, that game was, was won, um, I suppose, convincingly by Kilkenny. However, Two years later, Dublin put Kilkenny to the sword. And in case people thought it was a fluke, you know, it was a draw the first day and people would think, ah, Kilkenny do the second day. But no, Dublin absolutely put Kilkenny to the sword the second day. So the point I'm making is, you never know. You never know what's around the corner with a little bit of work. And as we saw in the very, very first clips with Napiersig and Cushendall, I have no doubt that if Cushendall played Napiersig, maybe... Maybe a month later, it could have been a different game. I'm not saying the result would be different, but suddenly a player will realise uh, it was grand up to a point. 
as a cornerback standing behind the forward. That was grand that got me this far. But when you hit real top players, that's gone. It doesn't work. And the Dublin team will say, after getting put to the sword that day, they learned and they learned very, very quickly. And I have no doubt in my mind that training changed and more pressure was put on players, you know, to, to not give space, to get out in front, win ball. And it's a pity I hadn't the clips of um, that match two years later because, you know, I have it in my mind, but I don't have it on, on file, um, that little simple things like letting players out of the ball first, that was done away with and suddenly a whole game can change. So, um, lads, I'll just go down through you again and maybe you haven't forgotten it now because I'm after talking too much. But again, I'm looking for one one thing each if you saw anything good or not so good that would be worth saying to your players, yeah, guys, this is what you should be doing or saying to them, lads, um, you got to start out this. So, Cahill, I'll give, you, I'll give you the first shot on it again there, please. Um, I suppose Kilkenny were putting them under a lot of pressure, but the, the, the big thing when Kilkenny had the ball, I felt, was uh, they were very selfless and um, playing with their heads up, looking for the pass. Richie Hogan gave a great pass across the field there at one stage, and uh, then in the second half, there was very good running, and Shefflin gave a, a good uh, pass up along the left-hand side, which I think ended up in a result near the end of the, the clip there. So the team play, I suppose, was the was the big thing that I would have taken from there, out from yep. the intensity that they were putting uh, force in yep. uh, Dublin. Cahill, I, I'll take that word selfless. And lads, that is huge. You know, and often in a club situation, at your maybe your best player, if he's not selfless, you won't get the max out of him or her. Sometimes the player that gets most ball, if they're if they're a little bit selfish, they're not maxing out. So you could have a tremendous catcher, but he or she wants to hit every ball they catch, they won't pass it. Whereas if they would just be a little bit more selfless throughout that ball, then you get results. So, um, you know, and again, as Kahala said there, many of these skills, you know, they're, they're, they're interwoven. You're, you're selfless, but you need the runners. You need the ability. So they're, they're, they're come together. So that's, We'll fly down to the rest of you there then and just one one quick thing on it there. Now, I want to try and get through the rest of them, but we can. I'll go through the way. Uh, Adrian Mayo, we'll call in the Mayo vote there. Yeah, just to add to um, Cahill's uh, the vision and the given the pass at the end of the clip was, was very evident. We were looking up on top from, from the camera vantage point. It isn't always given, but it was given every time. Every, every ball that was on was given and a score came off it. Um, from the start of the clip, the, the long ball that you spoke about, the high, the, the gaining of possession, the hand pass, and the goal by Owen Larkin, uh, exemplary stuff, sort of uh, textbook stuff. But uh, that mixed with a little bit of aimless play within, in the middle of it, uh, involving o Oshin Goff catching the ball from an aimless shot in around the square, hitting it out to Michael Finley, and Michael Finley aimlessly driving it wide. So uh, the mixture of everything. If these top uh, players can can have an aimless and and poor moments in play, the rest of us can have them as well. That's grand, Adrian. Thanks for that. Ryan, if you saw anything, are you back on the bench? No, no, you're grand. Uh, I suppose just that Adrian made a touched on it there a wee bit. Just the uh, aimless ball. There was actually, I think it was uh, Hogan played a bad ball in, and the defender actually got a wee bit lucky from what I've seen, because if that had been a good ball, the Kel Kenny mom was out in front. But, uh, and then the defender, Dublin defender, clearing it, you know, aimlessly out to the Kilkenny man. And I suppose the way things have went now with Dublin, as you said there, they've improved this last couple of years. There's no doubt that they probably, that full back would have been called by the keeper and look for a wee hand pass out to, and then maybe driven it up the pitch to somebody, to a Dublin jersey. Like, but, you know, that's, I suppose that's all, it was pretty similar to what the boys seen, you know, the space that Kilkenny were making and the run, the southwest running and the couple of cross field passes and the stuff the boys in space to just seemed to be, you know, in control of the game. Thanks That's for really that, Thank you. Declan, um, with your Donegal or your Tyrone or your Offaly eye there, did you spot Anton? No, no, it's just a master class by Kilkenny is all. Okay. Keith, any any particular one item there up in the cabin? Stand, standout thing to me, Martin, is the runners off the ball, the amount of them. There was always two, three to either side of the man on the ball. Okay. And Keith, can I ask you, up in cabin, uh, how would you how would you sort out a runner off the ball? 
as as an opposition. Yeah. So that you'd be encouraging your players to track track all the time, getting right. in tackle, keeping keeping tight to their player. It's actually simple, really. There's no magic in it. I mean, you follow them, and that's it. Yeah, exactly. You know, and again, folks, I'm not being smart, but I am maybe in a way. You know, we have players sometimes, I'm not saying it's Dublin as we're doing today or in the slightest, but sometimes in games, we get mesmerised by players running all over the place. But sure, if we follow them, well, then they won't be loose. Um, Dara, any one item there for you? Uh, just some of the Dublin players getting sucked in, and Kilkenny obviously punished them very, very easily, and were, they were made to look brilliant, I thought. I, Dublin were sixes and sevens, and Kilkenny were a team. And that can happen, Dara, can't it? It can happen. Very easy, especially with Kilkenny. They're known to do that in the first five or ten minutes, Martin. Damien, Galway lad, I know you won't tell us what you see. You keep it all quiet up there, but sure, throw something at us. I have the glasses back on again now, Martin. So, um, I think, again, look, at it's it's very general, but um, the ability, the high level of skill at the um, at that level at Intercounty, um, again, We'd say wide and expansive. I saw a lot of that. I saw players, um, you know, playing diagonal ball. I saw players out in front. Um, I, I, a bit like Dara there, I did see Dublin players getting sucked in. Um, Kilkenny player draw two or three. And then obviously when you draw two or three, there's men free outside. So um, also as well, Martin, at the high level there, the inter-county, um, lads, lads sort of um, have the confidence to hit long ball and to sort of trust the guy inside there to win his 50-50 ball. I think the way Hurling has gone more lately, you know, it's possession, possession, possession. It's heads up. You're not allowed to give away a ball. It's little short passes. But I'd like it to go back to the more traditional style where, you know, a lad clears his lines and moves on his ball maybe 80, 90 yards and trust the boy. Uh, in the forwards, in the inside line there to, to come and win a 50-50 ball as well. So I think it's a mix of everything, really. Yeah, well, Damien, a mix of Everton, that makes a hell of a lot of sense to me. Um, now, you know, folks, interesting enough, I mean, the lads there, just I meant to say earlier, you know, I have the privilege of working with all the lads and, and, and several more uh, throughout the country there. You know, so the Baser, a, a kind of a sample, we said we'd kind of pick an all-star team, but... You know, we also have lads like Kevin Henfey up there in Derry and Marty McGrath and Donny Gall and Prunchies across there and Ross Common and several guys that I work with. And, you know, the amazing thing about it is the team we have there tonight, if we sat down and we were over the team, we'd be there all night working through it. Because, again, we might not necessarily agree with each other, but it's when you when you toss it around and beat it around a bit, you then get to a, an agreement, if not a consensus. But I'm just going to go back through them here now again. And as I said, with, um, back inside. with the advantage of having had time. Again, I just want to throw things that I saw in them. Uh, you might agree with them, you might not. And that doesn't matter in the slightest. Um, once I agree with myself, I don't have to worry about what the boys think. But I'm joking here. Um, so the boys mentioned some of these. But the first, the first one there, you know, good work in defence. And again, the long ball. And this is at their county level, the long ball. It's all as dangerous. If you're a full back, you're a corner back, the last place you want that ball is in out in front of you. You know, where you, you don't mind it being 30, 40 yards out. And it ends up in a goal the first. Paul Murphy, under pressure from two Dublin men, but manages to get away initially. Gets the pass away then to Michael Fenley. Huge man at that midfield. There's the long ball. And under severe pressure, I mean, Dublin lads that day, they got beaten, but they weren't bad. They were playing very well. Small things in a hurling match. Small things... And suddenly it can be a 10 point difference. Sector, again, the early ball, the time. Break there. You know, standing out for that break. Defender went in where he should go, where he didn't really want the ball to go. But the forward can take the chance and stand out where he might like it to drop. And it did drop. Tactic is obviously to hit then, You're under pressure. Once a player gets running, it's very, very hard to dispossess him. Again, the hand pass, the ability prepared to give it. The ability to give it a player to take it and a player able to take it. Gets it off into a lark and goal scoring chance. How many guys or girls would take a shot from there? You know, almost on the end line. So, you know, how much practice does that take? Right on the end line almost. And one of the top keepers in the country standing in front of him. Again, it's going back to practice and striking. 
Good work, long ball, good support, layoff, goal. Now we'll watch the next one. What I'm watching for here now is a good puck out, a catch. All right, movement again, no panic, and very, very good use of the ball, and again, strike. By Larkin. Super finish by Larkin. They trail by six points to two as Herity. What's wrong with that puck out? It's gone beyond midfield. You know, the worst thing that happened that puck out would be won by double and come back down the field. But you start messing with short ones, you're opening, you're opening up danger, especially with club games and especially with underage lads. A huge puck so out. Not even, Henry won that puck. He doesn't have to win it. If he could only break the ball to ground, well, then that ball is up there, whatever, 30 yards from the goal. You don't have to win it. It's a bonus to win it. Been brought into this team for that puck out great catch by King Henry at 12. And you can't really see it there, but out in front. And it's very easy for me to sit here and say, get out in front. If you're the fullback trying to mark the player, well, then it's not so easy. But, you know, now no use being out in front if the touch is not good. Lovely low ball in again to Old Larkin, who looks at fire half. at the edge of the square. Gets the half pass back to Sheffield again. Again, when the shot is not on, play the ball alone. Now, lads, make, be under no illusion. The pressure from Dublin there was tremendous. There's no doubt about it. And... If the boys, the Kenny lads, weren't as composed, that ball would have been turned over. Richie Power is not his shoulder. It's uh, poetry in motion, so far for the Kenny. I'm not so sure about poetry in motion, but anyway. Um, right, this one. Forwards as Richie Power. It's occurring all the time. Not Every time they hit the double hit, it's, it's coming back to him as quick as they hit it. TJ Reid, lovely ball. So again, again, looking around. Score is not on. It could be my good friend Niall Corcoran there. He can do nothing else there. I would say that defender is doing exactly what he should do. He's not jumping in because if he lunged in, Richie be going around him and in for a goal. So there's not a lot you can do there other than mark space and see can you cut it off. Now, if Richie tried for the point, he'd maybe be blocked, but he puts it... All this time into the corner to Richie Hogan. Hogan has nearly all the time in the world to now, decide... At this point in time... There's no point in putting the ball across the field there if there's nobody around. So the players here, if they all, as a lot of club players do, congregate it in around the goals, that shot wouldn't have been on. So you need players to look around attackers and say, right, maybe this ball will be hit across into space because more than likely there was somebody else coming down along here. So that's composure and that's everybody thinking. Where he's going to put this ball goes all the way across to the other wing forward. That's Michael Rice. And His a good shot is block got in there, I think. Now, half blocked over. In my opinion, Dublin are playing excellently here. Okay, full back gets the ball. Dean Durkin that allowed Peter Kelly to go back. Gives a good hand pass out. He had a player waiting for it. That's all top class. And again, let her off. Back and uh, get the situation under control. Oshin got the corner back. Oh, we there. You know, you could never say that's not a good clearance. That ball now is out of danger. And now we're looking at either a catch or a break. And I think Conal Keeley reads it very well and comes in for the break here. Clears a block up to that forward division. Paul Murphy breaks it down, but it goes comes down to whether he has the shooting ability to put it over the bar or not. And he has. Now, he might not have got this one, but without a shadow of doubt, he has the ability. As far as Conal Keeley, Keeley has a quick look at the... Right, this time. Caught this time by Joey Bolland. Good to see him back in the Dublin jersey. Picked up by the man wearing the six on the opposite side. That's the captain of Kenny, Brian Hogan again. It's the early ball in towards the full forward line. Oh, this is where I would disagree with, uh, definitely I disagree with the commentary. And even the lads were saying there, you know, a nameless ball in. To me, Brian Hogan was under pressure there. And as far as I'm concerned, once he got it in around the house, well then... The forward doesn't have to win every ball. If he gets a share of them, we're happy. Plus, Peter Kelly there, the full back, he read it very, very well. And he was under pressure. Now, if he starts messing with that ball and taking that split second to try and find a man, I'd be fairly, fairly sure Owen Larkin would have dispossessed him. So he let it back out of the danger area. Then it depends on who's out the field. Peter Kelly, though, was alert to this one. Swiggles. Appearance. From a Dublin point of view, it's unfortunate it went to a Kilkenny man. But... In my opinion, I do the very, very same again. And, you know, as pot luck, who a ghost to. Now, we'll watch Michael Fenley with it. Gets it out, didn't really look very well. He has space, guys. Putting it, and that allows Michael Fenley to get onto the ball, Michael Fenley. He drove it wide. I'd say to him, 
Keep shooting, Michael. Keep shooting. He was inside his own half. We saw Slock Nealman in a couple of clips earlier further out the field and put a great ball over the bar. And folks, as coaches, you gotta be, you know, you gotta back your players. Right? If it goes over, he's a great fella. If it doesn't go over, it's not. No, I would say if the shot is on, you take it. And Nicky says Owen Larkin was free inside. Well, he was free with Peter Kelly standing behind him. Finley had a chance there. You know, he had, a, a, I would say, an 8 out of 10 chance of taking the point because he's put him over with his eyes shut in other occasions, right? Uh, if he popped it into Owen Larkin, well then, 50-50, maybe 40-60. So, again, it's easy in hindsight to say, lad, should have done this or should have done that. But I wouldn't. I'd keep my mouth shut in that case and say, hard look, Michael. Um, if he shot when he shouldn't shoot, be a different ball game. He has a shot at the end that's quite poor, you have to say. A little bit of ping-pong almost there, Nicky, where he, all the players just weren't quite careful enough when they were just the you ball. You can't be that careful at that level, lad. You don't have time to be careful. Yeah, a couple of, a couple of minutes of very poor play. Poor play, Nicky. I wouldn't agree with you in the slightest. But um, again, that's, that's just my opinion. Joey Vaughan and a good catch and a poor clearance. Brian Hogan, something similar. And Michael Fenley there, that was a hopeless wide win. Oh, oh that, that's strong now. Hopeless, you know. A hopeless a wide is a wide. If it goes over, it's great. If it doesn't go over, unless you're taking shots from where you shouldn't take them, I'd back the player to the hilt there. Well, Larkin had actually made a good run in front of his man against the ball. Now, what have we here again? Uh, big long puck out, okay. What's tidy man from uh, Dainsford? Clears his lines. Down in top again, and McCaffrey, Richie Hogan comes looking, but the man that gets the ball is Richie Power. Lovely little pass up to Henry Sheffman again. He's looking to his right, and he sees Michael Rice. Suddenly, in acres of space in Crow Park, and Michael Rice takes all the time he can. Continue to get the uh, attention, and I suppose there's no doubt that the physicality... Now again, serious pressure here. Three or four hand passes, OK? Uh, I think there could be four passes here before the strike, if we just watch it. He has been up. Michael There's Kenny one. in this Leicester final this afternoon. James Chapp gets the hand pass off. Henry Shefflin. There's four. Lovely little depth. No, that's, that took composure. And that took plenty of possession games opposed and unopposed. A player panics and tries to take the shot when it's not on and suddenly you're dispossessed. So again, it just shows the, the advantage maybe of working on some of that uh, possession games in training and having the composure. But again, if you don't have the ability to hand pass it, strike it short, strike it long, everything breaks down. And then of course, no point in having that ball out there if he hasn't the, the first ability then to put it off the bar. Yes, out to Old Larkin, Old Larkin, getting away from John McCaffrey, has time to look at the post, get out. Okay, um, right, we'll fly through the next one. So we have two other little clips here. I'd like to get through them if we can, lads. We won't spend as much time on them. And then we'll have a little... Tommy Walsh tidies up though when it comes off the hand of Brian. Now, just to make it a little bit bigger. Now, notice from some of the comments coming in that quite a few of you are able to see it fairly well at home, which is good. But if you can't, don't worry, you'll see it tomorrow. Right, away we go here with a few more clips. Brian Hogan, Henry Shetland, central to everything that Kilkenny are doing as well. Michael Fenley. Showing the composure to lay the ball off at the right time, to finding Richie Power. Richie Power looks to the right corner and asks Paul Connell Fenley to get onto it. Fenley coming in and out the end line. Connell Fenley now picks her up, they up here. Lovely bit of play. Oh, super goal by Connell Fenley. You can see the difficulty that Dublin are having trying to get the ball out of defence. Morris O'Brien goes long off. Beautiful catch by Paul Murphy. What a game. This guy is playing as a cornerback for the Kilkenny men. Ball breaks into the path of TJ Reid, into Henry Shefflin, in acres of space, Shefflin shot, Shefflin goal, the man. It's a touch, but out comes Paul Murphy, this guy has played very well. TJ Reid, winning the ball, makes a little bit of space for himself and then sends it in again to this full forward line. Knocked away, by shoot, breaks back to Richie Power, Richie Power lovely control to get inside the challenge, gets the ball off to Richie Hogan, Hogan. Thought about laying it up, then turns on to his right hand side, and Richie Hogan strikes it high. He gets the pass away, but intercepted delightfully there by Little Hickey. Gets it out to Michael Fennelly. With at least pump. There's a little bit of threat to that inside line. Long ball upfield. Colin Fennelly now things are up at the other end. Fennelly up into a Larkin. Larkin shot. Great save by Gary McGuire. Oh, top.
up his head right now. No. And Dublin rise to the challenge. First time that they've got a goal against Kilkenny. In nearly five championship matches, you could say, meanwhile, at the other end, Richie Power, off to Michael Rice. Ha oh, ha! Michael Rice rises to the challenge. But I think that's going to be changed right now. Looks like Shane Wine is about to come into the game for Dublin. Meanwhile, down at the other end, Owen Larkin. The hard way with that ball picked up by Richie Power. The ease with which Kilkenny can do things is a direct contrast to Dublin. Ball finds his way to Henry Shefflin. Shefflin tapping it. Okay, right, lads, very, very quickly. One point, one thing, very, very quickly, because I want to get another little set done. Um, we we'll start there. Cahal, I'll let you off again. One thing. Uh, Kilkenny won every, nearly every one of the the one-on-one -on -one duels. Okay, Cahal. Right, Adrian. One thing, please. But every time they got the ball in a dangerous position, they all headed for goal. They just turned and went for it. Okay, Ryan. If you saw anything, um, I suppose the boys mentioned about uh, Dublin players getting sucked in, and the Kenny were able to. He'll draw two or three men in and just give that wee hand pass out to the boys in space, you know, and that got them their goals. Okay. Declan, did you spot one? Martin, I'll have to put myself on the subs bench. It froze on me there for most of it. Okay. Declan, take a good drink of water there. We'll get you back in for the last two or three minutes, okay? You're all as good for a goal when you come in after a little rest. Keith? Come in. Keith? I got nothing there, Martin. Sorry. That's okay. Um, Dara? I uh, just very simply first touch the first touch from every Kilkenny player is just sublime. Okay, Damien, any one thing there? Yeah, again, Martin, the work rate and um, the support play and the team play, um, and sort of synchronisation the Kilkenny play there, the bit telepathic. They all knew wh where to run and where to go and when to when to stay. So you know, it's just poetry in motion there. Watching those few clips there from one of the teams. Okay, lads, I run down through them. The, there was one there and I just slowed it down here. I just have it at the end just to watch this one in slow motion. Long ball in. The catch. Now watch that. Now we talk about that catch and I said it before, several catches are got unopposed. Now I don't mean unopposed that there's nobody near them, but the defender has moved away and Richie just puts the hand up. I mean, there's nobody even going to pull on his hand, and I don't mean you should, but what I'm saying is to be able to catch a ball unopposed, you know, pucking a ball up the field one-to-one, -one, that's vital. And, you know, if Richie couldn't do that there, that ball would have dropped. So that's the first thing. The long ball in is always dangerous. Now, where is Colin Finley going to go? Right, he's going to go out in front of him or he's going to go in behind him. Richie moves. And look, how many players would release that ball immediately and the goal's open in front of them? You know, this prepared to give a pass. You just can't defend it. When it's given in a split second, nobody has time to close it down. If you delay the pass, that's where the rooks come. Look, it's laid off, touch, bang. Now, just back here to the start very, very quickly. Um, what I'm looking at is Long ball, good support, layoff, and a goal. Stopped off, and it comes off the hand of Brian Hogan. Henry Shepherd, central to everything that Kilkenny are doing as well. Michael Finley, showing the composure to lay the ball off at the right time, oh, finding Richie Power. Richie Power looks to the right corner and asks Paul, Paul and Finley to get onto it. Finley coming in around the end line. Colin Finley now picks it up again. They go on Larkin earlier. I mean, what right have you to shoot from there? That takes, you know, that takes a huge amount of getting up against the wall, shortening the hole and striking. That ball had no, had no right to go in there. So that's, you know, you can't get away from it. Other players in position. Here, lovely bit of play. Super ball by Gunvetter. You can see the difficulty that Dublin are having trying to get the ball out of defence. Morris O'Brien goes long off. Beautiful catch long by Paul again. Murphy. What a game. This guy is playing as a... Again, long ball. A catch. Defender, defender. Watch this by. Who's running? Corner back for the Kilkenny oh, man. There you had it. Time to run, made the run, and to be able to move on the ball and pick it. Again, with TJ, if he failed on the pick, that was it. So it comes back, folks, that skill of being able to pick the ball. Couldn't do enough of it. Ball breaks into the path of TJ Reid. It should not be happening. I'd have to say that. Anyone marking that man, Henry, and leaving him that loose. 
you know, that should not happen, but it does happen. So, again, with top players on teams, you've got to get somebody marking the top players. You have to do it. You cannot leave that space. Shefflin, it enters the space. Shefflin, shot. Shefflin, goal. That's a touch. Well, comes Paul Murphy. This guy has played very well. TJ Reid winning the ball. Makes a little bit of space for himself and then sends it in again to this full forward line. Knocked away by Shoot. Breaks back to Richie Power. Richie Power, lovely control to get inside the challenge. Gets the ball off to Richie Hogan. Hogan thought about laying it off, then turns onto his right hand side. And Richie Hogan strikes it high. Just gets the pass away, but intercepted delightfully there by Noel Hickey. Watch this one again. You're looking at a guy that has a lot of honours, lads. He's just outside the 21 there, and he drives this ball as far as he can hit it. It's never a bad ball. A ball up around the house is never a bad ball. And out to Michael Fennelly. But at least Plunkett brings a little bit of threat to that. What the long ball does is it keeps defenders from being able to do this blanket defence. And it gives chances. Now again, watching. You know, where is he going to go? What's he going to do? Sideline. Ran out in front. Took the break. And already players moving. So by watching these games, by playing games, you learn these skills. All up field, breaks to Colin Fenley. Now things are opening at the other end. Fenley off it to Larkin. Larkin shot. Great save by Gary Maguire. Oh, Tom. Okay, I'll close that. I'm just mindful of the time now. We'll give you this last one here and then we'll see if there's any QA. The left card. And Cahill Barrett, so changes as, as expected on both teams. Shane McGrath getting that puck out. Down into the corner here. Dropped and then recovered by John O'Dwyer. Bubbles looking to hit in his first shot. Hitting it well, holding it beautifully. Paul Murphy's the man in the green helmet. Calvin, Murphy trying to reach in. JJ's next in with the challenge. Tries to get the ball across here towards Noel McGrath. Didn't succeed. Jackie Terrell instead. Cools relaxed, spoons it back out and swept away out of danger. That was Michael Fennelly getting it away down. Slips it across intelligently to Noel McGrath. That's good use of possession. And then it slips past John O'Dwyer. Paul Murphy back once again, plays it low, in as high as Larkin, clever play, a plus to Richie Holm, his first touch, superb performance so far in this year's championship, back on to Larkin, and Larkin flicks it high, and puts it over for his second score, in the end, to Ferrari take control with Noel McGrath, trying to measure this one inside here for Bubbles to come up to, couldn't get to it, Jackie Turrell instead, moving this way and that, huge clearance again by Jackie Turrell, in as far as Tito Reid, and the final shot, wide game. Yeah, we're around left half forward, they're Laragon corner, they're just switching all the time, because this has been very different. Tito Reid, and that one's got straight over. First point, should have been, and, uh, you know, physical, but uh, very clean so far in a great game. Big huge one down, Paul Murphy in the green helmet. Van Hogan collided with him. Oh, see a chance in there for Seamus Kalman from Bonner Miles Pass. Still might happen. Seamus Kalman trying to scoop it up to himself. And he's now going away 35 metres from the target, over his left shoulder, right. and over the bar. Reed almost into profit. And James Berry did very well. And tip backs fighting hard for that ball on the ground and doing, doing well contained the Kilkenny Forest. It shows you the ability to have to come back down, and uh, well, that's the important score. And you know, the important few minutes for the Kelly down before half time, and Tip will be looking to press on. Paul Murphy hitting it in. TJ Reid gathers it in. Slips it in the hand pass. Paul scores. Right, folks. Two and a half minutes of video there, and a huge amount of stuff in it. Now, already I know my, my aim at the start has probably been achieved at this stage in that you, you, you will now certainly say too much, too much, too much stuff, too much video stuff. And if you take nothing else out of the night other than that, how much can lads take on board? What I'd say to you, if you get a chance now, between now and the Q&A, to write down real quickly, uh, you know, the couple of things you took on board tonight. And I'd say if you took on 5% of what we came up with, you'd be doing well, which says, you know, do not do too much. The few clips we showed at the start, 30 seconds. Man, that would that would be enough, probably. So, lads, very, very quickly now, and uh, Dara, you might just get ready for that with Q&A there. 
Um, one one thing, guys, that might have come out of that that's worth taking back. So, Cahill, if you're going to train in a hurling team next week and you're just going to bring one thing off with you, could you throw it at me there, please? I would say, even though it was obviously the game was, it's a, it's probably not Ireland final, it was, um, there was an awful lot of mistakes um, throughout them couple of clips. Basic mistakes for players at the, that level, I'd say, just get back to practicing the basics. Yeah. 100%. Again, Cahill couldn't agree with you more. You know, the top players make mistakes. Of course they make mistakes. Now, you bring that down, as I said, to your under 12, your under 14, your under 16. And, you know, these, this game is not easy. And to constantly harp on the skills. Adrian, one thing there, please. Yeah, I suppose... Um... A sporadic sort of play, but the, the 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 game changer for me when when you see him on the ball is Bonner Mahard, the way he's able to uh, leave a half back line behind him. Them players are few and far between, so you, you can build a team around or an attack around a fella like that who can break the half back line and go direct and make scores. It didn't always end in a score, but they're few and far between from our neck of the woods. A player who can do that. And again, Adrian, as you're saying there, it didn't always end in a score. That doesn't matter. It's about, to me, it's about trying to do the right thing as often as you can. And then what happens, happens. It's like being out in front as a cornerback. You try to do the right thing. It doesn't mean you won't miss a ball. It doesn't mean a score won't be taken on you. But if you constantly try and do the right thing, I think you will be a better player. Ryan, did you spot anything, one thing there to take off with you? Yeah, I suppose... Um... I suppose it just there were some great displays of boys winning their own ball, you know, and it's a great help to any team if they, if if they've got forwards that can stand up and w and win the ball and take it out of the air and that. But yeah, it's probably something that we don't practice enough in training. Uh, you know, boys not even winning, not even going for catch, and just even breaking the ball into a man's path and stuff like that. So uh, that I just thought that was great. Bonner, as Adrian said, Bonner he made a couple of great catches, and uh, so he did and few hours as well so yeah and you say Ryan as you said breaking the ball there's no point in breaking it if the other guy is not there coming for it so exactly. let's say you're you know if, if I'm centre forward and you're out midfield and I break it but there's no point if you haven't run in for it and that that, that to me again and we mentioned earlier is one of these hidden skills that we have to constantly try and make our players aware of Keith did you see Anton Connell in the cabin vote there I'm gone Martin okay Keith okay listen you played well all right um <laughs> Yeah, Keith, we make sure you're on the list for the medal. Um, Good stuff. Dara, Dara, did you pick up on Anton there? Uh, just one clip of Shamie Callan and when the move looked dead because the pass was poor inside, but he didn't give up on it, won it back and put it over the bar. Good man, good man. I have it written down here. Damien? Yeah, and look at Martin again, just the majority of people on the call will be club mentors and um, I just like to draw back to the magnificent seven there that slide we have on every night and you had it on at the start um, you know a lot of club players won't be able to perform some of those skills at those levels but if we constantly reinforce and constantly give them the ambition I think they'll, they'll get a lot further um, so what I'd be saying there just from a club player's perspective um, no matter what grade or what level go back to your basics and keep the skills coached and keep reinforcing night after night and um, you know you'd be surprised with with the levels that players could come to yeah I'd echo that Damien and again just to harp back earlier um, you know the Schlockney lads <clears throat> a puck of a ball away from maybe getting into an All-Ireland final and maybe winning it and cushioned all after being in a few of them you know and several of those players if not all of them if you were to ask them a couple of years ago could they ever see themselves getting to those places they probably would say no now, I'm just going to run back through this and very quickly, the couple of points I made here, oh, I'm just going to say the first one, bubbles out in front, the touch, the touch, the touch, and then the sublime strike. And then follow on after that, a long ball again, and I've shown him a few times doing it for Michael Fennelly. Okay, so... And Tahi Barrett, so changes as, as expected on both teams. Shane uh, McGrath getting that puck out, nice. down into the corner here. Dropped and then recovered by John O'Dwyer. Bubbles looking to hit in his first shot. Hitting it well. Hitting it beautifully. Paul Murphy's the man in the green helmet. Calder. Murphy trying to reach in. JJ's next minute the challenge. Tries to get the ball across here towards Noel McGrath. Didn't succeed. Jackie Terrell instead. Pulls your legs. Pulls it back out. 
one coming up. Watch for the composure and the hand pass and the score and the strike. And swept away out of danger. That was Michael Fennelly getting it away down. Slips it across oh, sure. intelligently to Noel McGrath. That's good use of possession. And then it slips past John O'Dwyer. Paul Murphy back once again. Plays it low. In as far as Larkin. Clever play. Across to Richie Holmes. His first touch. Superb performance so far in this year's championship. Back on to Larkin. And Larkin flicks it high. And puts it over for his second score in the game. To Ferrari take control with Noel McGrath. Watch here again. You know, everybody doing what they could. Uh, this one is Watch if you can, uh, Killian Buckley. You know, really racing to get over here. He says, I'm going to be needed. And then we watch the long clearance. Side here for Bubbles to come on to, but get to it. Jackie Turrell instead. Moving this way and that. Huge clearance again by Jackie Turrell. And as far as Peter Reid. Didn't come off, but as you, you said, Adrian, there they don't all come off, but you have to try and do the right thing. This is a very simple one coming up. Watch TJ again, like his brother did, like some of the Valley Hale lads did, running across in front for the break, picking it up over the bar. Watch that coming up. And the final shot just gone wide game if he's in the mood. Yeah, well, he's there moving he around left half hour down Largon corner. There's oh, just there switching all the time because this has been running across for the break, pick it gone. TJ Reid. Again, the Bonner again, lads. The long ball again. Reading the break. Reading the break. Reading the break. Got straight over. First point should have been, uh, you know, physical but uh, very clean so far in the break game. Watch the Bonner. Watch him slipping in behind now. Watch him slipping in behind. You know, a forward can run where he wants the ball to go to. The back usually has to go to where he doesn't want it to go. Huge run down. Paul Murphy in the break. Only comes once in the match. That's all he needs. In a good position, Shami in a great position. Okay, the hand pass didn't come off. And then Damien referred to it. How many of our players at that stage would hit the ground and stop? No, not on this occasion. Still might happen. Seamus Calvin trying to scoop it up to himself. And he's now got away 35 metres from the target, over his left shoulder, and over the bar. That was on Darren Gleeson a few minutes ago there. TJ Reid almost yeah, into profit. And James Berry did very well. And tip backs fighting hard for that ball on the ground and doing, doing well contained the Kilkenny Ferris. And again, the catch. You know, to be able to do that, there was nobody pulling on his hand there. Up, grab it, and go. Great catch by Bonner I think it's Shammy outside him. That's important. If Seamus Callan came in this way, it would suit whoever is there, Noel Hickey or JJ Delaney, and who is there. But the very fact he goes out that way, it makes this defender have to think. And it gives another option for the attacker coming in, the Bonner. In pass, Jackie Scores! It shows you the ability to have to come back down, and uh, well, that's an important score. Yeah, and, long yeah. ball again coming up. In part of two minutes, but it's carried out before half time, and Tip will be looking to press on. Paul Murphy, hit it. Again, the catch. Catch, catch, catch. Get in. TJ Reid gathers it in. Slips it in the high pass. Pass. Okay, Dara, we're kind of running heavy on the time there, but if there's any um, few questions coming up there, we'll, we'll, we'll take them. Yeah, not a huge amount of questions, Martin, but a lot yeah. of comments, in fairness, an awful lot of people were involved in that discussion, which was brilliant, and they were spotting things as well as we were going along, and I was watching them coming in, and they were spotting stuff that I never spotted, and once or twice, they picked out what none of us spotted, but when you played it back, we were able to see it, so that was great to see people contributing like that. There is a question in for Cahill asking, did he play underage early? Oh, go on, Cahill answer it. <laughs> no, I never played hurling, never. I've had all said hurls at the house, but I had cousins in Ballina that used to play, but uh, that was about it. But just on that there, um, Darla, you know, again, uh, thanks to Cahill for, for coming in on that. And again, you know, I wasn't in the slightest bit surprised, you know, how, how much he picked up there with, if you want to say, an on hurling eye. It doesn't matter. You know, you, there's no book on who can coach or who can't coach. Um, and if you open up your eyes a little bit, you're going to see things that are blatantly obvious. I mean, anyone will see a guy that's not working. Anyone see a guy that's not chasing. And the solutions, most of the solutions are reasonably easy. Now, of course, if you don't have the quality of a player, sometimes it is going to catch you. So, 
Go ahead, Dara, if you have one or two more, or if you have any, if you have none, that's grand as well. Uh, get, getting young lads to be selfless, uh, always a challenge, Martin, but I think that was a good takeaway from tonight as well. Yeah, yeah, selfless. I mean, to me, Dara, with that one is, you show them the examples of the top players that are selfless, and you say, look it, if these guys are doing it, if Bonner Marr is firing a ball out to Bubbles the Wire at that level, you know, and Bonner Marr could, could take it on himself, if they're prepared to do it, why don't we do it? So the way I look at that is you show them the um, show them the value of being selfless. And equally, maybe if you had a chance to take a little shot of themselves when they are being selfish and how it doesn't work out. Now, I wouldn't put that out in front of the whole panel. You know, I would take a player maybe on his own or on her own and say, look, you're catching great ball, you're winning great possession, but the fact that you won't throw it out, we're actually getting nothing from it. Uh, there was one question come in here, all right. Uh, how would you convince lads to believe that a long ball is worthwhile, Martin? Uh, they see all the short stuff and are convinced it's the only way to go. Well, I could be very smart and say you looked out there tonight and you saw teams winning with plenty of long ball. And I would show them plenty of clips and I could have done it, but I wouldn't like to do it of where a lot of short ball causes teams to lose the game. And equally so, Dara, it does depend hugely on the players. Like if I go back to it and we mentioned that on the goalie seminar, um, you know, we had Owen Murphy, one of the top keepers in the country, telling us that sometimes the, long, the short puck out goes wrong for him. And he's poking out the top class defenders. Now you bring that down even one level, two levels, but bring it right down the line. And your keeper, is not a top class keeper as regard you know he's not he's not an all star keeper he's an ordinary honest to god club hurler the players he's poking it out to they don't have that ability so you know to me one of the first things you do with the opposition is you try not to let them score and if you can keep the other base from scoring well then you're going to draw the match at least so every time you do something risky you're drawing them onto you and uh, that would be my take on it and so many of the top players and the top coaches, you know, I listened to him O'Shea a couple of weeks ago there in a the webinar, and again, he said, keep it simple, keep it simple. So that that would be my take on that. Okay. Uh, do you have any drills for ground hurling? I know you have loads, but you might talk about the importance of doing a ground hurling drill every so often, man. Yeah, well, I would do one every third night at least, and we have them. Um, we had them on the, on the um, coach and the managing the team there the first night. They're up on the web there. I think it is workshop number one. And we'll send out the links there again tomorrow. It's a very simple one. It's lines of four. And I'm sure Declan Sherlock there would have seen the awfully boys do it for years. And it's not that you're trying to get players poking every ball on the ground, not by a long shot. But when the time is right to do it, lines of four up and down the field or lines of four across the field or lines of three working the player in the middle. Very, very simple, really. Declan, do you want to come in on that for a second if you can still hear us? No, no, I, uh, Martin, I, I would agree. Uh, being able to tap off a ball, particularly moving, rather than going through the, the whole take it in the hand and then looking for somebody. Um, as is, uh, Damien mentioned earlier on about John Troy, John Troy was brilliant, brilliant at that stuff. Moved the ball on really quickly and got scores from it inevitably. Yeah. And I, Dara, I, I'd be very strong with younger players that haven't got the skills to a high level of rising and striking from their hand. And if they're insisting on rising, they're not going to be able to do it because it's going to be taken off of them. Um, if they're not great at striking from their hand, you know, even when they have the ball in their hand, they're going to be closed down, they're going to be blocked, they're going to be hooked. Whereas if they get proficient on the ground first and be really good on the ground, they will enjoy the game, they won't be frustrated. And then little by little, you know, you know, I mean, look at, I, I can remember a great coach down here, Jimmy Nari was his name, and he trained as a school teacher, Eddie Brennan and James Ryle and all of those fellas, and he brought his, his school to 13 Ryan AF finals in a row, in a row, which was unbelievable, and won a share of them. And his mantra was, get them good on the ground first, that they're moving the ball, and if the ball doesn't come up first, you move it off on the ground. If you haven't room to strike it out of your hand, you don't even raise it. A couple of simple things like that, and you talk about nurseries, and you talk about, you know, player pathways. Well, the pathway that he had, you couldn't say that it didn't work because I don't know how many inter-county players came through his hands. And, um, you know, to me, what was good enough for Jimmy was good enough for me. And that was his methodology. And then bit by bit, you work on all those skills. Okay, Dara? 
Okay, uh, Martin, uh, I, this is in from JR. I think as a coach, to recognise the assist or pass that set up the score as much as the score is recognised. And I guess video can help in that way because we often remember the score, but we might remember the tackle or the turnover or the puck out that set it up. Well, Dara, I'm glad you mentioned that because, again, um, I, I, I took the title tonight. I was wondering what to call it. And I took it from the little Camogie booklet last week, you know, developing a coach and I. And that is so, so important that we can all look out in the field and we can see the player that's driving this ball and catching this ball and doing the nice stuff. However, as you have said it there, are we aware of the player that lays off the pass? And that could be with a hand pass, it could be with a flick, it could be with a hook, it could be anything. And that's where the coach and I comes in, that between yourself and your mentors, that you're valuing and seeing those essentials. I mean, you could have a defender that never hits the ball, but he or she are getting the hooks in, getting the blocks in, getting the little flicks in, and maybe keeping a very, very good player scoreless. Now, how many people see that? We'll say the, the hurler on the ditch doesn't see it really, and um, the player might not be fancy, but doing an essential job. Somebody mentioned there earlier about being able to break a ball. If you don't have players able to catch, especially high ones, but if you have a player able to break it, and you have another player intelligent enough then to be in on that break. You know, that's that's developing, that's the coach and I. Okay, Dara. Uh, just one last one, Martin. Uh, uh, there's one here that came in, I guess, kind of tongue-in-cheek, but it has a quote, quote from a club mentor saying, just because you see it on the telly doesn't mean you can do it. Oh, wow. Yeah. Dara, I would think um, too many of us watch too much television, you know. And we're watching, as I said earlier, we're watching these sublime players of the top quality. And even, you know, even with his clearance trying to put it across the field, wing back has it and he says, I try this diagonal ball across the field. But, you know, is he or she able to strike that ball 70 metres? Are they able to strike it 70 metres to go in between two poles 10 yards away? And then are they able to hook it over maybe a centre back that's in the way of it? So for certain, uh, we watch too much television in that line. Uh, Martin, I, I might just come in there for a second, if you don't mind, Dara. Sure, Damien. Uh, it was just a point I had earlier on there was, you know, all the young fellas around the country are are, are um, watching the TV in the top player. And then we're below in, in local fields in, in rural Ireland or in parishes. And, you know, the kids won't be at the skill level, but I think we have to give them the ambition. And we have to let their imagination go wild and we have to create little scenarios there that's going to stimulate them and, and, and keep them psychologically focused for us. So, you know, little when you relate back to a game and if you're down the local field on a Tuesday night and you're coaching your 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 um you've seen the game on Sunday and you're in the field on Tuesday night and you can relate back to as did you see T G Reed's catch and you can build the ambition in the young fella, and then you say, we're going at catching now, and that's the sort of thing. So they've got the visual, and they've got the model of best practice. And I think then it's our job as coaches um, not to decide that they're not good enough to do anything. I think we need to stay at it and go back to that magnificent seven again. 100% Damien there. Okay, Dara, anything else there? Uh, yeah, one just came in while we were talking there. Do you think there is... Um any, sorry, no, let me read this first before I do it. Um, uh, when you're watching it live, sometimes you're only watching the ball and not watching the match. That's yeah. a fair point too. It's a great point. And, and Dara, you know, I mentioned a notebook there earlier. It makes a huge amount of sense to have a notebook in your pocket when you're at matches and they needn't even concern your own teams. And you're watching for those little things. As I have said to you tonight, the, the, the people looking in, you know, if you did it five minutes ago, write down, what did you learn tonight? What did you see? You'll only get a fraction of it. And unless you have, you know, you get a chance to look back on the video tomorrow or later, you'll see things then, oh, I forgot that. So I would always say between yourself and your, and your management, write down all these little snippets, all these little nuggets that are worth considering. Now you can't bring everything to the field, you can't do everything. But when you have them written down, then you can highlight it. That if you find, for example, Look at lads, our guys are fouling foolishly too much and we, we tackle that. Or our guys can't strike, they can't strike far enough on both sides. We work on that. The rising is letting them down constantly. You know, I mean, 
if players are insisting on raising the ball, they won't pull on the ground. Well, then make sure they're absolutely 99% perfect at it, that at least they're able to get it up quick and move away. Because every split second that's lost is going to cost them. Okay, okay Ira, I, sure. Yeah, right. let's us up. Sorry? No, that's, that's them all gone through there now, Martin. Right, but you look at, that's, um, we probably went on a little bit longer than we had intended to hear. Um, I'd just like to thank all the lads for coming in there and, and giving their, their expertise, their opinions, and um, hopefully you'll all get something out of it, folks. Um, look at, this is the last of our, I suppose, practical workshops next week. We're having a what should be a very, very interesting one is we're, we're looking around the world and we have people in from various clubs across the world, New York, London, Argentina, etc. And it will be an opportunity for ourselves, I suppose, to see what life is like in the other field. And we look forward maybe to several of you coming back in there. And other than that, all the best when you get back to the fields in a couple of weeks time. And if you remember not only the Magnificent Seven, you'll be doing fairly well. So um, thanks there to Adrian and Ryan and Dicton and Keith and Cahill and Dara and Damien. And um, Cahill, I think, get that hole ready. You'll be, your, your phone will be hot tomorrow there now. we lads looking for you to, um, to, sign, to sign you up. OK, so look at Dara, thanks for your um, element working, working in the background there and all that. And we'll, we'll close the show there now. Thank you very much.